God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Pastor Trish is hang, handing out the sign-up sheet. Please sign up. It's important to God's hand ministries. Amen. Um, please sign up. We also have the, do you have the meal too, thing too? Or you guys are covered with the meals for now? Praise God. Let's give God praise. We're covered with all the meals. Over. God provides till July, Brother David said. Hallelujah. So uh, <clears throat> the beauty is, hey, let's give God praise. Adam, Stacey are here. A big shout out. Say it with me, victory. Um, we're going to jump right in. So in the past, my old dead self used to get frustrated and throw hissy fit when technology wouldn't work or things didn't go as planned. But then I heard this joke, Brother Todd, that if you want to make Father God laugh, tell him your plans. Ain't that the truth? And Lord Jesus, forgive me. Amen. Every breath is yours. You're, you orchestrate everything. And we're going to just worship you. Amen. So um, I say that because I have all these songs, you know, queued up and everything else. But it's okay. It's okay, right? Um, so I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. We're going to open up with the Lord's Prayer like we always do every Tuesday evening. We pray in this manner because our Lord Jesus Christ said so. Agape taught us how to pray. And I ask you to just, uh, when you pray this prayer, just know. I want you to see how Lord Jesus Christ feels as he's seated at the throne. And he hears you pray this prayer that he taught us when he was on this earth. And can you imagine as far as how much you bless him? Amen. When you say this prayer, he don't, he don't judge you with anything. He loves you. And he's for you. And I'll tell you right now, you just being here, um, bless his father like no other. Praise God. Um. On that note, uh, there's a lot of prayer requests going on. This is the beauty about when you just say this prayer. Father knows your heart. Amen. Like Sister Brittany was brought up. Lift her up in prayer. Amen. Um, Bruce Milburn was brought up earlier. Um, Bruce and Rocky, Rosalyn. Um, Cassie, Brady, her son. Um, PJ, Franklin, his family. And all of our families right now that, um, you know, get this report or this test done and they get a report back that, believe it or not, tries to rock your world, doesn't it? But I'm thankful that I'm planted and rooted around church family that only Lord Jesus Christ rocks our world. Amen. <laughs> only he rocks our world. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. So, Matthew 6, we're going to start in verse 10. Well, let's start in verse 9. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Um, give somebody a high five before you sit down. Praise God. I know y'all just got done eating. It's just good to move around. Praise God. <laughs> it's just good. Oh, yeah. Jesus name. Air 5. Woo, that's a good one. Praise God. So last week we, uh, we covered 
the first three steps, the, the first three principles of I am recovered. And those first three principles say with me is identity, identity. Affirm, affirm, and meditate. meditate. We went into the identification that we have being a Christian, that we are no longer our own, that we died. You see, this is very important because there's a lot of sick Christians walking around. And guess what? These sick Christians are trying to preach the gospel, but it don't work like that because you have to be crucified in him. Amen. Galatians 2.20 says so. You have to be crucified in Christ and he has to live inside of you. Well, how does Christ live inside of you when he already done left? Well, he done told us. I will send the comforter. My father will send him in my name. And he will live and abide in you and dwell in you, say with me, forever. forever. And glory be to God. There's many of you that have testified here lately, um, recently, that you started hearing from the Lord. You actually hear his voice now. You're having conversations with him. How powerful is that when you can have that kind of relationship with God Almighty, amen? So now the follow-up the follow up with that in this identity is now we protect this anointing. Because remember, there's only one anointed one. He is Holy Spirit. What makes you anointed is because Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Can I get an amen? amen. And that is, say with me, anointing. Amen. Now what protects this anointing, we go to the second part and it's affirm. This is how we protect the presence of God in our life. You see, religion has us believing you protect your anointing based on your attendance, coming to church or all the things that you could show people that you're doing for the community. Uh, hear, me, hear me now, that's good. But if your heart is there and you could feel it right now, yes, beloved, you could feel it right now. Holy Spirit said rebuke that. The way you protect the anointing of God in your life is the way now you speak the word of God in and over your life. Amen. You don't speak blessings or curses because guess what? God gives us free will. Amen. So say that with me. Affirm. These are the affirmations that God is asking you to speak over yourself. Amen. How many of you are actively making affirmations over yourself? Praise God. Look at all the hands go up. And I know that the hands aren't just going up just to go up. This is your relationship with God. And, and, right? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Because guess what? If you're waiting for Brother Joey to do it, guess what? I'll do it. I will. Call me and I'll do it and I'll, I'll make affirmations over you. But as I said last night, I got to hang up the phone and go to my next appointment or maybe go get something to eat. Right? I may not be able to talk to you anymore for the rest of the day. Right? Then, so, so my point is, Brother Adam, who's speaking over you? Because we're li we live in an evil world where this world wants to continuously speak over you. Oh, you're going to pay for that bill. Oh, here we got this job again. All oh, these people just don't act right, don't they? Listen, I'm not picking on you. This is what I go through. This is what I go through, right? And all that devil is wanting is for you to have that conversation with them. And next thing you know, you're making these negative affirmations. You know what negative affirmations is like? Put it this way. Did you know that an injured rabbit calls in wolves? Many of you hunters know this, right? My beloved, just cover your ears. I don't know if you're okay with this. I don't want you to have a conniption fit, okay? We're just preaching, telling the story. You got to be obedient. But an injured rabbit, when it's injured and it's hurting, when it's crying out, yes, it's crying out for help, but now the wolves hear it and the wolves will come. When a Christian speaks negativity, it's calling for demons to come. When we gossip, listen, family, don't talk about another brother or sister. It's easy to do. I confess I've done it. And we regretted it. We repented, but I confess. Am I the only one that's done it? Okay, let's just be clear, right? And does, doesn't Daddy God say, stop it? And praise God for that, right? Because we know, I'm so sorry, Father. God wants you to make the affirmations that help, that assist the angels of God to fight for you and to bless you. Amen? 
Say, say this with me, meditate. When you make affirmations, hear my heart, hear my heart. The reason why I am starts with the identity and goes into your affirmations right away. Okay, I'm a beloved child of God. I died in you, Lord Jesus. I'm raised again through you, Holy Spirit. I'm not my own. It's not just a shirt. I am your property. Now I'm going to start speaking life. I'm going to start speaking blessings. Even over those that hate me, that hurt me, that cuss me. Father, bless them, O oh Lord. Bless them. Bless them, Father God. Oh, I just want you to bless them. Amen. You know why? Because Father's blessings over them. You don't know how it is. But Father God, just bless them because God said so. Amen. When you start speaking this way and you start say, speaking the blessings, what are you doing? You are now programming on how you meditate and how you think. It doesn't work backwards. See, many people think, okay, well, I'm a Christian. Well, I, now I, I just, I, I hear this all the time. Oh, um, Brother Joey, I just need to get into the Word so I can get the Word right in here. So, so I know that I got the Word and I could just speak the Word. And, and, and so, so I can have the Word and speak the Word. And so that the Word is just flowing through. Calm down, Crunchy. Calm down. You're getting religious with God. The Word is Jesus Christ. And He lives inside of you. Do you belong to Him? Yes, I belong to Him. That's all that matters right now. So now, how, how do you speak? Well, what do you mean? I need to speak scripture. I need to speak. Just don't get religious with God. How do you speak when you wake up in the morning? Do you wake up in the morning and go, oh, my gosh, this back is just never going to get good. Well, guess what? It ain't never going to get good, boo-boo. Your back is going to get worse and worse. Believe you. I'm telling you. Because all you did right when you woke up is call all the devils to attack this back. And God Almighty is saying, Why? I give you my blood, I give you my spirit, the sword, but you choose not to use the sword, and you get up and you just start complaining. Uh, uh. You know, I make fun, but you can ask Trish, I was like that four days ago. Y'all didn't see it because Holy Spirit don't let me act like that. But when it happened, when it happened, I said, oh no. Father, this is your back. And I know, Lord Jesus Christ, you're not seated at the throne with an achy back. I'm your body. So, Father God, I thank you that I have your strength, your healing, your power. Father God, line up this back. Line up this body. Amen. Did the healing come right away, Brother David? No, it did not. But guess what? Do we have to walk it out and act like it? Yes, we do. Amen. Do you know why? I believe. Well, Brother Joey, it hasn't happened yet. I don't care. I believe. Hallelujah. I believe. Amen. So those were the first three. And by the grace of God, we are going. Let's give Brother Aaron a round of applause. Amen. I don't know where we're at with this thing, but let's see. Let's go up, back up here. Thank you, beloved. So we're now in this, um, in, in this section, Recovered, and we're just going to cover this real quick. And um, if this still keeps acting up, I'm going to just shut it down because we're, we're already flowing. All right, cool. So this is what we just covered, amen? And we're just going to leave that up there. And uh, we're going to go through this because we got our small groups, and praise God, we got 19 minutes. 19 minutes to cover the rest of the book. Amen. Say it with me, it's okay. How many times have we witnessed God Almighty stop time for us, right? In service, amen. I mean, we've like, we felt like we've been worshiping for like an hour and uh, he, he only let 10 minutes go by, right? So I'm believing that right now, praise God. So we're going to go through the rest of this and everything's going to come together. And um, I pray that it just blesses your socks off as always. We're just going to call out these principles, and then what we're going to do is tie everything in together as we um, conclude everything on the screen. In principle four, we talk about receive. Say it with me, receive. receive. One of the hardest things for some Christians to do is to receive that they're forgiven. Am I preaching now? Brother Todd, when I first called on Jesus, guess what? I, I wasn't... I wasn't sold out on the fact that you're telling me all the horrible things I've done. Is... And guess what? 
even though God Almighty said it's washed clean, I don't know none of it, Joey was still thinking about all this stuff. And the enemy loved that because I did not receive fully what Lord Jesus Christ did for me. So I still functioned with condemnation in my head and tormenting thoughts that I wasn't forgiven because it just can't be that easy. Say it with me, yes it is. Yes, it is. Step five is exchange. Say that with me, exchange. exchange. When you receive your true forgiveness from God, this is the part where in this anointing of Holy Spirit, you know that if you're not, if you're not speaking right, like I'm, let me explain. If you're dropping F-bombs, or like if you stub your toe, then all of a sudden you just lose it and you're cussing. How many of you know that's not God? Can I get an amen? Let's just make that a point, right? That's not God, right? I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you. I'm just, does God cuss? No. Okay, so don't sit there being crunchy. I'm not looking at anybody. All right? But if you stub, if you stub your toe and, oh, dude, beep, 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 beep. Thank you, Jesus. That don't work. You hear my, you hear my heart? There's a devil that's, that's in you that's trying to play games you got to get rid of that, amen? And so when you get rid of that, this is where exchange comes in. Because you have the power with God, just like when you called upon him and he didn't judge you, he said, you're mine. Isn't it amazing that when we called on Lord Jesus Christ, we knew that I need you to save me, God? Let me ask you something. When you called on that glorious day, that right now all of heaven is still parting because you did that. You called on Lord Jesus. Let me ask you something. When you called on him... Were you really concerned about all the bad things you've done did? Did it matter? But how interesting is it though? After the fact that you're a Christian, now all of a sudden that stuff matters. It's religion. Say it with me. Say it like Sister Jackie. Rebuke that. <laughs> so God gives us the authority and power to exchange these things, not to dwell on it. Let me explain. Let me explain. May I? Thank you for asking. I'm trying to think of a good, a good one. Perfect. Trisha and I, we have this accountability of saying no matter how busy our day is, if we can't go to the gym, we're not going to go to the gym. But when we do go, we're going to go together. Not one of us goes, we go together. And here in my heart, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes because we're so busy, right? But God said so, so we listen. Amen? Now let me say something. Now this is, this is just a story. So don't you go Facebooking and Twittering and all this stuff that Pastor Joey and Trish got problems. This is a story. But we're talking about exchange and the power of exchange, okay? Let's say, for example, we're working out at the gym, and now my eye starts to wander and starts checking out other women. I'll tell you right away, Holy Spirit will put me on the ground. I'm going to tell you that right now. As a, a, as a man of God, yes, I'm a pastor, but as a, as a child of God, he will put me on the ground. But it's up to me. Say it with me. It's up to me. It's up to me. Say it with me, it's up to me, not you, up to me. It's up to me to exchange that sin for grace. Amen. How do you exchange that sin for grace? In that repentance, Father, pluck my eye out. I don't ever want to see another woman that way. I want to see every woman as your beloved daughter, and I want to see every soul as the price you paid, Lord Jesus Christ, on that cross. Amen. And I will not get up off the ground until Holy Spirit says, you're forgiven, it's done, I receive it. Amen. So say that with me, exchange. Amen. Once again, we ain't got no issues and I ain't doing that. But my point is, is that if there's some of us in here that's doing something that's not of God, God is saying, will you give it to me? You have the power. There's so many Christians right now claiming that they're addicted. They're not addicted. They just haven't died in Christ and made the exchange. And God is saying, I want the exchange, but you're not repenting and humbling yourself. 
You're acting like you know me and I know you, but all you did was cry out on my name, and in my name there's miracles, but I want all of you, not just part of you. Amen? God wants all of you. Hallelujah. Say it with me, all of me. All of me. Wants all of you. Step six. Say it with me, Christ. In this process, step six is the center and the foundation of I am recovered. And in this process, in this principle, you will find out that as you, once again, let's go through it. Identity, when you know your identity in Christ, when you speak blessings and life to bless God Almighty, when you meditate on his thoughts of his good and perfect nature, when you receive his goodness and his grace and his mercy, when you exchange all the things, your shortcomings, the tormenting thoughts, whether it's depression, you know, I just talked to somebody today, and pastor, the devil, stop, stop. Every time I talk to you, oh, the devil this, the devil, just stop. The devil has no authority over you, amen? But if you believe that, right, if you believe that, then guess what? Are you resurrected in glorious power through the Holy Spirit or are you sick? You're sick. Amen. When you're sick, you need to get right, right? How do you get right? Get crucified. Amen. Get crucified. Christ is the center of everything. He is our foundation. And when you know this, that your exchange is in Christ Jesus, what happens next in principle 7 is you start to overflow with this anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking at overflow. Hallelujah. Listen, Holy Spirit's church is in the overflow. Amen. Why do you think people say when they walk in they feel God's love? It's the overflow. Amen. Now hear my heart. Not everybody is overflowing. Glory be to God. I want to say probably 80% is overflowing here. 80%. The other 20%, they want to overflow, but then they get caught up in things. And it, it drains them. It makes them dry. Crunchy. That's why I said crunchy. Right? When you're not overflowing, you get dry and crunchy, right? And guess what? I thank God that they still come because they start to realize, wait a minute. This isn't just a roller coaster ride. This is how you live all the time. Every day of your life, you're living in the gooder and gooder. Yes, I do. Amen. Amen. Is it because of what Joey does? I ain't got nothing to do with it. It's all because of what Lord Jesus Christ does. Amen. Oh, get ready now. Ten more minutes. Hallelujah. See, Father held time already. Thanks for your prayers, y'all. Principle eight is valued. When you're overflowing in his goodness, when you're overflowing, Brother Adam, in his power, when you're overflowing in his clarity, hear my heart, we all mess up. Can I get an amen? amen? But don't you love it, though, that when you mess up, it's different now? You know you're saved by God. You know that you're no longer your own because you know when you mess up, man, I have to get right with you, Father. I'm not going to run away. Amen. I'm going to fight this through. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fight to get to your altar. I'm going to fight just to get to church. Amen. And I love that because that's Holy Spirit crying out to you saying, get around my people. Hallelujah. We just talked about that last week with Sister Dina. Right. A beloved daughter had to hear that and you saw the fire in her. How different is worship service without her? And she heard it. But then guess what? When all of us testified and she was like, Oh, my God. And she never realized the impact that she has in Holy Spirit, not just for God Almighty, but in the fellowship. Amen. And we all have that. Stacey, Adam, you need to know that. When you're not here, it, it drives us crazy. We've cried many tears for you all. We love you guys. And we're never going to give up loving on you all. And listen, we don't love you because you're perfect and good looking. We love you because you love Jesus. Amen. And that never changes. Hallelujah. You're so beautiful. Amen. So beautiful. Praise God. Almost as beautiful as me. Oh, was this on? Was this on? Say it with me, value. When you overflow in God's goodness, in principle seven, principle eight takes place. When you overflow in Holy Spirit anointing, right? When everybody around you is crunchy and you could be the one going, hey, let's stop that. Let's, let's stop. Come on now, let's pray. Come on now, stop talking about that, brother. God says, 
You know all you're doing is you're just, you're just blessing the devil when you do that? When you overflow in God's grace and mercy, Sister Tanya, start looking like you, praise God. Just walking in victory. You feel amazing. It's not Tanya. It's Holy Spirit in you and how you bless God Almighty. Amen. And look, you live this way because you know my God is for me and he loves me. Now, guess what? When you know that my God loves me and he's for me, say with me, value. And that is step eight. Praise God. That's principle eight. When you know your value now, guess what? Say this with me, existence. Say good or existence. My gosh. Three people. <laughs> I'm sweating through my clothes here. Help me out, family. <laughs> when you know that your value. We did a, we, I, didn't we do a sermon of value not too long ago, about a couple months ago? And the value was, we, we went into as far as how much, uh, how much the father loves a son, right? And how, how much that child, and we had, we, had, we had parents raise their hands who has kids, right? And we talked about how much that child means to you. Right? And then, of course, some people said priceless, you know. I mean, they're everything to me, everything, right? And then we showed Lord Jesus Christ this picture right here. And then we asked, come on now, family. When he went down in the water and came up, God Almighty said, the great I am spoke. Amen. My beloved son, who I am well pleased. Amen. And now there was a way because the word of God says it's open now. Because he is the way. Hallelujah. Say with me, value. And then we concluded that worship service when we showed Jesus on that cross. But then this is the beauty in who you are. Say with me, who I am. Where does Lord Jesus Christ live now? And beloved child of God, this is your value. You see, you're not a piece of meat, right? You're not a piece of meat. You're not just something that could be hurt and thrown away, even though, even though the devil's done did that to us, right? Your value is in him, amen? And when you have that value, you know that your existence is to share the anointing of God through his love. I said this before, it's been a while now, and I'm, I'm thankful Holy Spirit reminded me now to do it again because I'm excited about this. How many people do you think that I will attract if I look like this, Brother David? Sister Lena, you want some of this? <laughs> Brother Aaron, your beloved wife's like, nah. But let me ask you something. How many people will I attract for God in my existence if I'm like this? Right? Right? Principle 10 is repentance. This is now where it's in the relationship with God. You know your existence. You know your existence is to continuously overflow in the goodness of God. How do you continuously overflow? Guess what? It's a relationship. Say it with me, relationship. relationship. In a relationship with Christ, with God, his name is Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. He will guide and direct you. He will correct you. He will convict you. God does not condemn. Amen. That's the devil. There's a difference. Condemnation is guilt, shame, torment, right? Accusations. God does not do that. Our God Father says, I know what you're wrestling with. You don't need to wrestle with me anymore. Just give it to me. Sometimes father will say, you know, even though you did nothing wrong, just go say sorry to that person. Half the room got two inches taller. Relax your butt cheeks. All right. But if that's you, if God's telling you, look, even though you did nothing wrong, I want you to go, you, got, you best go do it. Why? This is your existence to show repentance in order to plant the seed of agape. Amen. Principle 11 is, say this with me, exchange complete. Whenever a beloved child of God repents, truly repents, Brother Todd and I, we do it all the time when we're up here at this altar, when we're worshiping together. Get on your face, whatever it is, but when you repent and you leave it, you don't touch it no more. 
Amen. And that's called exchange complete. Amen. I don't know what you're talking about. It's done. It's forgiven. Hallelujah. Last but not least, principle 12. Say this with me, disciples. Praise God. We all, we all need to be discipled. And who is the one that disciples us? His name is Holy Spirit. Amen. So in summary, as we bring this all together, step four was bondage. And when we received the bondage, not of this world, but we're bonded to Christ by his blood. Amen. Say it with me. I am bonded to Christ. You have received the anointing from God in your identity. So you know your identity. You make these affirmations. You meditate on these affirmations because you're speaking differently now. How many of you speak different? As a do amen. We're honest with God. Amen. And isn't it, a, isn't it an everyday deal? Because my goodness, catch me at Walmart. Don't judge me. Just pray for me. Right? I could lose it. But it's in that where I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. Even though they don't want to open up another checkout, I'm just going to be at peace. <laughs> right? It seems small, but he is God and he lives in you. Amen. And he's asking you, will you talk to me? Will you bless me? Can we be here together at this moment? Amen. You're never alone. Hallelujah. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. When you know that you are bonded in Christ, there's this exchange. And every time you make this exchange, what was said earlier, here's my sin, Father God. Here's this depression. Here's this worry. Here's this cussing. Here's this pornography. Here's this wandering eye. Here's this thought. I don't want it no more. Holy Spirit, he tells you, you don't want this no more. Well, I'm going to need you to start being thankful. God will teach you this way. If you're struggling with depression, God will tell you, I want you to be joyful that you're never going to go to hell. That's something to be thankful for every day. Amen. Ain't no matter how you feel, that's just the truth. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hell. You think it's hot now. Right? Reflection. Hallelujah. It's Christ. Every time you look at Christ, you should see your reflection. The identity thief. Check this out. This is, this is very important. When you overflow... When you overflow in your relationship with God, you will continuously expose the identity thief. The light in you will always expose the devil and his plots and his games and his emotional garbage and the things that he's trying to put there before you. God will show it through you all because of, say it with me, my overflow. Who am I? Praise God. We just discussed this. Amen. Say it with me. I am. A beloved child of God. No one can tell you otherwise. Amen. And don't you let anybody else make you think otherwise. Amen. Praise God. Don't let anybody else make you think otherwise. Listen, I am his favorite. Amen. So you all agree with me. Praise God. I am his favorite. Step nine, overcomer. This is your existence. Say it with me. I overcame. Because he overcomes. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Say with me, step 10, living abundantly. This is how you live abundantly when you choose to repent. Amen. Step 11, free through him, hallelujah. This is the exchange complete. And then step 11, worship through him. This is discipled, amen. And as you can see, this is how God laid out this worship book. All the Holy Spirit principles, read, I am recovered, Amen. Hallelujah, I am recovered. <laughs> Glory be to God, it is time for small groups. Hallelujah. Are you guys excited? So in, in the small groups, it's pretty much just wide open. Share with whatever you want to share with. Amen. Um, share with you, uh, share your struggles. Share. I, I encourage you to share things that you really don't want to share. That's the number one thing you should share. May I repeat that, Brother Tom? The things that you think that you can go into this small group and hide, that's the number one thing that you should expose as a beloved child of God, right? Amen? All right, love you guys. God bless you.